So there is no great, there's no perfect probiotic. Um, they don't even know which strains of probiotic are better than others, okay? Now, let me explain something. There's a big difference into what uh, microbiologist scientists are publishing that are studying the microbiome and then what probiotic manufacturers are promoting. Promet, oh, here's the, here's the things you're gonna hear every probiotic manufacturer talk about. We found the strain. We found the best one. This is absolutely the best strain and here's how all the other strains are not as good. That's a common pitch line. We have, here's another pitch. We have the highest amount of active live bacterial culture species in ours. Ours is magic, ours is best. And that's another one. Or we found the perfect combination of bacterial probiotics to put into a product. Whenever you hear any of those kind of marketing things, you're basically dealing with uh, nonsense, okay? None of those, none of, None of those factors alone is gonna determine how you respond to a probiotic. Um, having more of the species or another may not be the factor that changes your microbiome if you, in a positive way. Uh, having one strain or another may, but th they don't know what your strain is. So <laughs> there's always some trial and error. There's people that will take a probiotic and have diarrhea and, and bloating and distension. And some people take a, the same probiotic and feel the bloating distension goes away. They may even have more energy. Um, that same person can take that same probiotic at a different time of their lifespan have a completely different effect. So those, those are the issues with, with probiotics. Now, when you're looking at um, how it all works with diet and, and impacts of health benefits, I made this diagram for you. So you have a prebiotic. A prebiotic is, uh, are foods that really help your healthy bacteria grow. So prebiotics will be foods really high in fiber, right? And then those will impact your gut bacteria properties. And that gut bacteria property will impact the postbiotic. And those are compounds that bacteria release like lipopolysaccharides. So let me show you a few. So let's talk about prebiotics first. So prebiotics, foods really high in fiber, a diverse fiber diet is going to not only help you make uh, healthy bacteria, but the more diverse your diet is, then the more diverse your gut microbiome can be. So uh, fermented foods would be very great. So if you have reg regular fermented foods every day and diverse vegetables, that would be great. Um, flax seeds, psyllium husk, chia seeds, those kind of fiber sources, ground those up. That could be way, a great way to start your day. Some people round up flax seeds and chia seeds and psyllium in the morning, added some water and they get a very good fiber source. Making a conscious effort to have some fermented foods regularly. Uh, are all good things to really impact your gut microbiome. Way more effective than taking a probiotic, uh, especially if you're doing it on a regular um, basis as part of your normal health response. This is just a screenshot from Amazon. So many different probiotics. They, you know, this, this, you know, one will say like 60 billion, one will say 5 billion, one will say, oh, we have these 20 specific strains. To be quite honest, uh, none of these really matter uh, because the only thing that matters is how you respond to it. So there is some trial and error when it comes to probiotics, which is a bit frustrating, but that's really the way it is. The problem is if you take prebiotics, your, your body has the ability to make the own, its own bacteria. There's some you know, physiological wisdom in raising the species you need. So you can get much more of prebiotics than you will with a probiotic.